Hi, I'm Joe Pachkovsky. I'd like to welcome you to part three of this Inkscape introduction. And in the previous introduction, we drew this lizard. And in this one, I wanted to show you how to give it some color. Now there's a, probably a million possibilities of how to do this. And these are kind of nice because they can make them as colorful as you want. And previously I showed you by when you have it selected, you could come down to the color palette here and click on a color to change the fill and shift click to change the stroke. But there's another way to do it that's maybe a little easier. So I'm going to come up to objects and there's this fill and stroke panel here. I'm gonna, when I click that, a panel opens here, which will give you more possibilities and options for changing the color. The first thing you'll notice is there's a fill, a stroke panel, a stroke paint, and a stroke style. So the stroke style will control the thickness and the type of uh, if you notice that's flat, you can change the way the corners react. You can just kind of play with that. Um, but in the stroke paint selection, you can click the X to take away the stroke entirely or click on the flat color to give it a stroke. Now let's go up to the fill. And in the fill, I want you to notice a couple of things. There's the X, which means you can take away the fill, click on the flat color to give it a flat color, and there's a gradient, linear gradient, and a radial gradient, a mesh gradient, pattern, and swatches. I'm only concerned with probably the first two at this point, um, just to keep it simple. So. Over here, you will notice it has flat color options. And I like this one, the wheel, because you can easily get, get to a color you want by clicking around the wheel. Now, inside the triangle, you can go from full saturation to lighter or darker. So that's, you can visually see exactly what you're doing, and that's kind of a nice aspect of it. So. I'm going to come to the stroke and I'm going to click X because I don't want a stroke at the moment for this shape. And down here you have two more panels. I'm going to come up to the fill. So you have a blur, which if you, there's two ways to control this. If you click within it, you can change or you can click the arrows here, or you can just click on this and give it a value. So if I say 2%, it gives it a 2% blur. At the moment, I don't want any blur, so I'm gonna move this down to zero. Next is opacity. And I'm gonna copy and make a, copy paste this so I have another vert cup another lizard on top of it so you can see what happens. When I change the opacity, it becomes transparent. So you can see, uh, maybe it'd be better if I give it a different color. So you can see the transparency allows you to see what's underneath it. And the degree you can change here or here. So there are your settings. You have the fill setting here. You can pick your color, you can pick your opacity, and you can give it a blur. So I'm gonna delete this for a moment and come back to here. Now I'd like to give this some color make this look more interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the fill tab 
and I'm going to come up to the linear gradient. Now the linear gradient is a little tricky because when you pick the linear gradient, by default, it's what it's doing is going from one color to another, um, or one state to another, more than just color, because if you see here, these gray checkered thing indicates that it's a transparency. So it's going from the green color I had previously to a transparency. And that's, you can control, but you've got to come over here to the edit gradient tool. And when you click on it, you'll see it's making a straight line across the lizard. And when I click on this, I see the properties from this are opacity is at zero, which means that it's totally transparent. What I like to do is I'd like to give it a different color too. So I'm going to come up and give it a yellow color. And at this point, it's transparent. And at this point, it's only like 50% transparent because of where this position is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select while this is selected, you see it's red or dark now. I can come up and I give the change the opacity to 100%. And now it's going from the green to this color here. Let's make it a little bit Okay, so now you can see ex see how the transparency the gradient is working. There's no longer a transparency there. And when I click on that, I can again change the color if I wish. So the gradient tool can be a little tricky because you have to have the this selected to actually change the properties. When you have this selected, you only see the gradient. And under the gradient now you can see, I don't know where it gets this name from, but where this number value comes from, I have no idea. But anyway, that's how you can do that. Now what I'd like to do to give this some color is to make this a little bit interesting. I'm going to uh, draw some an oval. I'm going to make it. Uh, this is convenient to just click on this. And I'm going to take away the stroke by clicking on the X. And I'm going to make a copy of it by pressing Control D and moving it. And out there. Now I'm going to group them and bring them onto here. And I'm going to rotate them. Clicking twice gives me the rotate option. And try to get them aligned with the head a little bit and make them a little bigger. I'm pressing shift to go from the center. And there are some eyes. Now I'm going to use the draw freehand tool because I don't need anything too exact on this. Usually I avoid using this tool for drawing the shapes, but just for giving some color fill, I'm going to use this. Now, what color will this be when I draw? It will be the, my default black, I think. And it's smoothing to some degree. going to continue drawing when it's selected and you move your mouse over the last point it turns red it means you can continue the lizard there he is I'm going to make that a smooth 
and I don't need that. I don't want to do anything too complicated. I'm drawing with my mouse, so it's a kind of a mess, but I'm going to add a point there and take this away. And I'm going to select all these points by dragging my mouse over this way and hitting smooth. That makes them all behave nicely when I want them to have a nice... I'm going to add a point. Okay, I don't need anything fancy here. I just wanted to have something. Now I'm going to come over here to the stroke color and I'm going to give it a bright green. And I want it thicker, so I'm going to come up here and change the value to a higher number. I'm going to come over to the circle tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to draw a circle here and give it a bright green fill. And I don't want to stroke, so I'm going to come to stroke and click X. I use the lower panel for these basic colors and for the X here to make it none. But if I need any other shading, you have to go to the fill triangle to get some more interesting colors. So I'm going to hit Control D to copy this. And I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to hit Control D again. And I'm going to move it to copy and make it smaller. Maybe a little smaller too. So I'm going to hit Control D again. It makes a copy. Going to make that smaller. Control D again. Make a copy. Make that smaller. And I'm going to hit select this one. Make this a little bigger. Control D makes a copy. 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 I'm going to make it bigger. Control D make it bigger. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Control D make this even bigger. Control D. Control D is duplicating it. And it makes a copy exactly where the original was. So you can't really see that anything happened until you move it. So you have to sort of keep track of what you're doing. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Control D. I'm going to change the shape a little bit now. Control D make the shape again. Control D. Control D. And I'm going to fix this curve a little bit because this line's a little too straight. So I'm going to take the node edit tool here and change the path to fit this a little better, the shape of the snake. Come back, my selection tool, hit Control D, 
And here I also want to fix this. Let's make this a little more even. Undo that. Okay. Control D. Make it a little smaller. Control D. Control D. Control D. I'm using control and my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Make this a little bigger here. The same with this one. Come back and select my circles here. Control D. And I'm going to make it smaller. Control D. Control D. Make it smaller again. Control D. Control D, Control D. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Where did that do it? Control D. Control D. Okay. And we're going to come up here and maybe take this one. And I'm going to say Control D and put it one on the leg. Control D. Make this a little smaller. Control D. Control D. Make this a little bigger. Control D, and put this here. Control D, make this a little smaller. Control D, put this here, gonna okay, make this bigger. And Control D. Okay. Now I'm going to, I think that's enough to give it something. So what I'm going to do is now, if I select everything, this says select all objects. If I select that, I select all objects. I have 51 objects selected, but I'm going to hold down shift and unselect the lizard shape. And now I only have all the other objects I've drawn. Here, if you see, undo. I'm going to group these. Object group. And I'm going to move these a little bit to the side here, just temporarily. I'm going to take this lizard shape and I'm going to make it. I'm going to hit Control D. I made a copy and I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to hit Control D again, and I'm going to move this one over here. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to come up to the Filters panel here and come down to Material, and here it happens to be a lizard skin. So I'm going to click the lizard skin, and you'll see what happens. It gives it this funny um, kind of shape. I wonder if I can change the color of that a bit. Yeah. So I like this color. You've got to play with these to figure out what they do. It's a little bit unpredictable. In fact, it's completely unpredictable sometimes. Um, but you also notice it becomes a bitmap and it also becomes very fuzzy. And the, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this to the bottom by putting it here. And I'm going to put this on top of it. 
Now you can see what it did is it made it bigger and fuzzy. I'd like it to be sharp. So I'm going to select both of them and come up to the object clip and set. So what it did was it put the fuzzy bitmap inside the selection. So now it's very sharp. So now what I want to do, i put that back on the page. I'm going to take my original uh, gradient fill lizard and I'm going to put that on top. And I'm going to, and when you put it on top, it snaps into place. Now, the reason I did it this way is because I want this to be a bit transparent. So I'm going to come down a little bit because just this by itself I don't really like but I'd like to give it a little bit of a interesting fill without being too too strange so this is now a little bit transparent 73% transparent I'm gonna make a copy of this by hitting control D again and move it over here and I'm gonna make it this one gray and I'm gonna put it at the bottom I'm gonna put this back on top and I'm gonna group these by saying object group and you remember my decoration I'm gonna put that on top ah, now when I move it over it's actually not on top so I'm gonna move put it on top and put it inside and see how it aligns and I think I can use my arrow keys to move it a little bit better position now I'm going to group this by coming up here you can also press control G now this is on the bottom and I'm going to come up to the fill here and I'm going to add a slight blur to it just a little and make it perhaps a little lighter color to give it a kind of a drop shadow effect let's make the blur only one percent and then move it I'm going to use my arrow keys on the keyboard oh, I'm changing make it one percent and select it And let's come and see what it looks like. So that's uh, one possible way out of a probably infinite possibilities of making uh, just a flat shape look a little bit more interesting. So I've used the clipping mask here, which I'd just like to review for a second before. Um, I'm going to just take this I'm going to show you that there's just one copy here and I'm going to hit copy paste to make another copy and here I'm going to come to the filters and I'm going to say materials and I'm going to add just anything really um, enamel jewelry for example now you can see the edges here uh, are very fuzzy and I don't really like them but if I did want this fill but I wanted it to be clean and sharp I'd have to put it I'd have to clip it and clipping means you're putting it inside another object it's making a clipping mask so this would have to be at first at the bottom this would be on top and then I can select them both and I can come to object clip and set so now it's very sharp and you can clip anything we'll go look at that more in the future but so I have transparency I have a gradient fill and I have made it by blurring it making it a drop shadow 
So uh, I hope some of this is helpful. You could practice some of these. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And uh, I'd like to wish you good luck. And I'll see you in part four. Thanks a lot. Bye.